we're on to our sixth and final mini lecture, um, which is vertebral augmentation. So this is a procedure that's done for pain management for vertebral body fractures, and they can be secondary to osteoporosis, which is most common, uh, osseous tumors, or even hemangiomas, although uh, hemangioma treatment is pretty rare. Uh, tumor treatment's less rare, um, but sometimes needs uh, extra um, step, which would be RFA ablation of the tumor. And we're not going to talk about that today. And then we're going to kind of also talk about the evolution of the procedure itself. So <clears throat> originally when this was described, it was just vertebroplasty, which is putting a needle through the um, pedicles in a transpedicular approach and injecting cement into the bone. Uh, that bone does have fracture clefts in it, so the idea is the injected cement goes through those fracture clefts and um, immobilizes them, and then it's the immobilizing uh, that, increase, uh, that improves the pain because those fractures can no longer slide on each other. Um, there was a lot of questions whether vertebroplasty helped pain more than just a sham procedure or if it was just, you know, the amount of time it was from the fracture and people heal naturally. So some people came along and said, well, if we could have more cement, people would probably feel better. And so they developed kyphoplasty, which is the same as vertebroplasty, but instead of just injecting cement, we uh, inflate a balloon into the bone space uh, to create a cavity and we can inject some more cement and <clears throat> lo and behold that actually helped people um, did have better pain outcomes than vertebroplasty or just sham procedures which is good and now we're kind of beginning a third phase of um, or third evolution of this procedure and instead of just um, creating a pocket for more cement, we're actually implanting a titanium device that we can uh, help regain fracture height. Uh, and the thought is, if we can just get a few millimeters even sometimes, we improve the biomechanics of the spine and decrease the risk of developing new fractures above and below our intervened upon level, which is a risk um, uh, that can happen when we do any of these procedures. So just like everything else, we need to evaluate pre-procedure imaging and make sure the clinical symptoms correlate. So if there's imaging shows that they have a L1 fracture, but their palpable pain is to the side of the vertebrae and going down the leg, well, that's not fracture pain, that's nerve pain or muscle pain, and us doing a procedure is not gonna help that. So we need to make sure that you know the imaging and the clinical uh, effects correlate and that we can help them. So here's an example. This is a patient who had thoracic spine uh, radiographs done. My annotation's up for some reason already. It's hard to see. But it does look like this vertebral body uh, has lost some height here and then here. And I did annotate these further in case you couldn't see it. And then, you know, a lot of times uh, we can't really tell uh, chronicity of a fracture just based on the x-rays. And these interventions really only help for pain if the fracture is acute. So we need to prove that the fracture is acute. And we can do that by getting an MRI. Now, I'm not going to describe all the findings on the MRI, but what we're looking for is fluid in the fracture in the vertebral body. Uh, that shows that it's still got some edema there and it's not fully healed. So the best sequence to look for that is a T2 sequence, a stir sequence. So all fluid is bright and all the fat and everything else is darker. So in this case, this is our fractured uh, T11 vertebral body, and it does have this fluid cleft in it, so it's a, probably a subacute fracture and something that uh, vertebral augmentation can help. 
So during the procedure, we you know line up our usually this is done in biplane because we want to see uh, both the lateral and the AP projections as we do the procedure. So here's our AP um, projection. And the important part is we want to get access through the pedicle and not medial to the pedicle. Medial to the pedicle is kind of in this area, and that's where the spinal canal lives, and we want no part of that. So we want to be able to see our pedicles, which I've circled here. And this is the level we're looking at. And really, the medial wall, the pedicle, is the most important thing to see clearly. And we don't want to see our needle on the medial side. Uh, we do want to see it on the lateral side. And then <clears throat> on the lateral radiograph, we want to be able to see the anterior and posterior columns of the vertebral body, which we can. So uh, we got transpedicular access, and in this case, we did a single access kyphoplasty. So we have a special set that can kind of has a curved component and can go across the midline just from a single access, which is nice for patient comfort and for you know procedural time. We blow up this uh, balloon within the bone to create a little cavity. And then the most important, well, besides access, the most important part of this procedure is, you know, watching where this bone cement is going. So the bone cement is obviously flowing liquid and it's flowing enough to go through the needle and eventually it'll harden into even harder than bone. But while it's liquid, it can go places we don't want it to go. So while I'm instilling this, I'm basically looking in the lateral projection and making sure nothing's going posteriorly. We don't want any cement somehow leaking out and getting around the spinal cord. Uh, that can be disastrous and need an emergent surgery. We're also looking in the AP view to make sure nothing's going out laterally into paravertebral veins because we also don't want any of this liquid cement to go into the veins and go back to the heart and into the lungs and have you know, cement PEs, which has been described. Um, but in this case, everything went great, stayed exactly where we wanted it to. Nothing went posteriorly. It did kind of fill in to that superior part of the vertebral body where the fracture cleft was <coughs> on the MRI. So. This patient was very happy, helped the pain. Here's another um, um, patient. Again, this is a stir sequence of the MRI where fluid is bright. Fluid usually marks where there's abnormality and edema. So in this case, an L2 fracture. And in this case, we did a vertebral spine jack. So almost exactly the same, but we use a little bit bigger needles and we need to get access into both pedicles, so bipedicular access. So here we're getting our second needle in place here. <clears throat> and these are the titanium implants that we put into the vertebral bodies. So as you can see, they kind of look like a scissor jack, and we're just looking to push this end plate up to kind of maintain our biomechanics of our spine angles and everything else. So once the spine jacks are up, it's actually just like any other type of plasty where we get fill in from the bone cement. And again, making sure nothing goes posteriorly. This line is actually in line with the needle access, so I'm okay with that. But nothing else posterior and nothing going laterally. So again, this patient had a great outcome where uh, you know, he could barely move and then walked out um, and was feeling better. So very satisfying.